Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today's webinar. Um, it's great to see so many people uh, log on um, and register in advance. And so if you're watching this um, live on the day that we're, that we're filming it, then, then welcome. Um, if you're watching the recording, uh, hopefully you get a, a lot out of this. I'm gonna jump on and share my screen now and, and get into the presentation. Um, so today we want to talk about athlete sponsorship uh, and how you can get yourself sponsored. And this is a little bit of a, a new topic um, from the precision athletic point of view. Um, not something that we talk about all that much, but something that we're involved in. And myself personally, um, I've been involved in for a number of years and I'm quite passionate about it. And so we thought that we would put it out there and see what the response is like. Um, and it's been really great. So. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is um, give you a little bit of an overview um, on the topic, um, give you some hopefully some good ideas to take away. Um, given the, the, the time, it's, it's a big topic. We're not obviously going to be able to cover everything in, in um, complete detail, but hopefully it will give you something to, to take away and, and work with. So jumping straight in, who am I? Um, uh, John Perkins is my name. Um, I am involved in sponsorship, uh, digital marketing. Um, I'm a Precision Athletica uh, as Chief Commercial Officer. Um, I've also got experience in the past working um, in sponsorship with, with different brands um, on different websites. I've uh, worked with pro athletes, uh, Olympians, um, and, and all kinds of different levels. Um, Myself, I, I, like most, a lot of people that work in sport, got into it wanting to, to play sport. Um, golf, I was quite passionate about golf when I was younger, as well as Nottingham Forest. But if you've seen me play football, you knew that's never going to happen. Um, but although I was doing well with golf, um, I was doing well. I was competing in a lot of amateur tournaments, um, qualifying for some professional events, going okay, um, sort of state level. I was doing, doing, doing well, but it became apparent to me that um, I wasn't going to be the next great star, if you like. And I have friends that went on uh, to win European tour events, uh, make Ryder Cup teams and things like that. Um, and I always kind of knew, I think, deep down that I wasn't on their level. And so it wasn't going to be that way for me, unfortunately. But at some point along the way, I had a friend that was working for one of the big... Um, sports management agencies um, and that sort of showed me and introduced me to the idea of the other side of sport um, and I actually found a lot probably a lot more enjoyment in that side of it and so I've sort of tried to, to push on in my career in that side um, obviously also founded um, athletemarketing.com um, which is hopefully going to give other people out there some ideas and tools and tips um, Whilst I was working, went back to uh, university uh, for, to, to go and do an MBA um, and added in probably the education part that I was missing uh, from the early years where I was more focused on playing sport. Um, but yeah, so the, the side of um, the sport really interests me, business and sponsorship. Uh, and how the players, how that whole side, how that world works. And so, um, as with today's webinar, uh, sort of topics that we're going to just try and go through, like I said, quite briefly, just because of the time we've got, but to give you an introduction and some help. Um, briefly into marketing, touch on that. And then what is sponsorship? Uh, the types of sponsorship that you might be able to aim, aim at. Um, how to approach companies, how you can provide value to them. And the kind of mistakes that I've seen from people in the past that I think uh, are quite easy to avoid. Um, and hopefully that'll, that'll help you. Um, probably before we go any further, um, and I know I was looking through the list of people that were registering, and it was a, it was a really good mix. There was, you know, there was some people on there that probably work in companies that get approached uh, for sponsorship, some of the different brands that registered. Um, there's some, I know I saw some names of some young emerging athletes, some established ones, there's probably some parents in there and coaches, um, and everyone's all probably approaching the topic of can, can I get sponsored or can my child get sponsored or uh, is it actually possible? Um, 
my opinion is yes, it is possible. Um, I think pretty much anyone potentially can get sponsored, even in the climate that we're in at the moment, where the economy is uh, definitely not at its strongest and businesses are uh, very wary of what they're doing. Um, I still think there's potential there, and it probably comes a little bit down to the type of sponsorship that you're going for. <clears throat> um, what your expectations are and what value you can deliver so um on the surface though i think it's possible anyone can get sponsored yes i do um before going too much down the path of sponsorship i wanted to just touch on marketing um and it's something i'm involved in um as a marketer um but i think it's also just worth getting your head around it um so if you're in the mindset that you're going to look for sponsorship then i think it's worthwhile to know a little bit about um, marketing um, just the concept it's going to be something that the the business that you're approaching is likely um, heavily involved in and the nature of you reaching out as an athlete as a sports person to try and uh, to try and get something from the company means that you're going to be approaching them in the sense of being involved somehow in their marketing, the way that they're uh, representing their brand or building their brand. And I think it's just therefore worthwhile understanding a little bit about it um, in order to know how you might fit into it. Um, and in the best way I've heard it, and this isn't, um, I wouldn't claim to have come up with it, but the, one of the best analogies that I've seen um, compared it to uh, bringing the circus to town. And I also really like that picture, so I thought it was a good, to, good one to use. Um, but the analogy is really trying to explain how marketing works and, it, and what is marketing. Um, and the concept of it is that um, if you, were, uh, you worked for a circus and you were gonna bring the circus to town, you might go out and you might look for uh, a suitable place to to hold it, to to put the the tent and you know all the animals and everything. And if you were to go out and you were to go and find the the right place to uh, to pitch it, to host it, to hold it, that's uh, that could be classed as market research. If you then uh, put together a sign advertising that the circus is coming to town this weekend, um, that would be uh, advertising. Uh, if you took that sign that you've made and you put it onto um, the back of an elephant, um, that would be a promotion. And then, uh, so if you were to walk that through the town, that would be promotion. I'm trying to remember the analogy. Um, if the elephant then, with the sign on it saying that the circus is coming to town this weekend, actually trampled through the mayor's garden, um that's and then that makes the evening news the press come down to cover it that's publicity um if you could get the mayor to then go on uh, the tv and laugh about it and, and you know talk about how funny it was that this elephant was in his garden uh, and turn it into a positive that's public relations if you then took the elephant with the sign on it and you walked it past uh, the local schools if you walked it through the um the the neighborhood where everyone lives the residential neighborhoods um that's market segmentation and then if on the day of the circus everyone from the town came um to the circus what you picked that you promoted that you've targeted people for and you start to talk about the different games that you've got the stalls that you've got the treats that they can buy um you answer any of their questions and ultimately you get them to um purchase and spend their hard-earned money with you at the circus, then that's sales. And the concept of all of this is that if all of this was, uh, was created, was planned, was managed, um, and all of these activities, you know, you carefully, you're done with uh, advanced thinking, that as a collective comes together as, as marketing. And that's what marketing is. Uh, and a lot of people will think it's just one of those things, but really it's, uh, it's the collective of all of them. And as I said, why, why cover that? And it's, I think, because no matter who you approach as a company, um, whether it's a big company and they have uh, a whole team of people looking after this part of their business, or whether it's a, um, a general manager or a small operator, um, and probably the owner is the one that, that does everything, to some extent, they will be 
looking at how they can grow their business and how they can develop. Um, and you're really trying to appeal to them, I think, in, in one of those, in one of these areas to help them um, bring their brand to the front to do, to sell more or to deliver more services or whatever it is that they do. And so you're going to need to just have that concept in mind of why, uh, why they might work with you and what they might be trying to achieve and how they might go about doing it. If you can have a thought on that, then I think it gives you a good starting place to then work out how you can, you can go about doing something with them. And like the, uh, the Formula One car there on the screen, um, it's, it's highly unlikely that these, uh, these brands invest massive amounts of money by chance and just for vanity things like to have their logo on a car. They're, they're obviously aligning uh, with the different organizations here to get their brand to the forefront, to, to grow what they do. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's not an accident and it would be pre-planned and there would have a lot of thought and time gone into why they would choose to invest their money in this way. So therefore, what is sponsorship? Um, and that's the that's really the, the the topic that we're that we're looking at, um, and that you're all interested in. And um, if you're an aspiring athlete, obviously your mind jumps to uh, you know the lots of money, probably support from big name brands, putting yourself out there, um, helping you on your path to to becoming a star. Um, but let's start with the core, and, and I think if you look at the putting it quite simply. Um, Sponsorship for me is um, is two parties or, or potentially more multiple parties coming together um, for a value exchange, and I think it's important um, as well to grasp that value goes both ways. Um, it's not just the case of what can a sponsor do for you, what can they what can they provide to you. Um, it's really it's what can you do for them. Um, and then how, how does that marry up so that both of you can achieve uh, the goals that you're looking at? And in this case, obviously, we're talking um, some sort of brand or business and yourself uh, as an athlete or someone that you know as a sports person. And then if, if you get the concept of what sponsorship is, um, the next logical spot is why might uh, a company sponsor an athlete? Um, and in this sort of area, there's, uh, there's lots of reasons potentially, and it's going to be unique to each company, each brand, each organization, um, and each athlete, uh, and what they all bring together as to why they might, um, look at sponsoring athletes. And again, don't have to just think that this is something for established stars that have already made it. Um, Obviously, they're the, they're the most prominent ones that you see in the media, uh, see in magazines, on, on TV shows, etc. Um, but it can really start quite small and it can start for, um, you know, anyone that's were in, involved in sport, if there's a, if there's a good value exchange, really, um, between the, the company and the, the sports person. Uh, but why might companies sponsor athletes? Well, um, some of the obvious ones there is to, uh, to increase their sales, to um, reach a new audience or to become more established, uh, talking to the audience that they're already uh, focused on. Uh, it could be to, to launch a new product, um, you support those in the community and generate goodwill. That might be coming if the company's uh, focused a little bit in the in the PR space of public relations and, and trying to improve their image that might be something that does appeal to them um, and again with the the first few that I mentioned there in terms of reaching a new market or audience you just have to look at um, shows like the the last dance at the moment that's on Netflix about Michael Jordan it's quite an interesting one one of the episodes touches on when um, he started his relationship with with Nike um, and he didn't want to, if, by, by his own account, didn't really want to go and, and meet them. Um, they weren't particularly established or they weren't the big player um, in basketball at the time. Brands like Converse were in terms of the, the shoes that the players were wearing. 
Um, but Nike wanted to get into that space and they saw the, the young Michael Jordan, obviously it was a good decision for them, um, coming through and they, they leveraged um, him moving into the sport and what he was achieving to, to start to develop their brand in that space, in that sport. And, and Air Jordan was born. Um, and I think that's probably been a pretty good relationship for them uh, all round. Uh, but they, they, used, uh, they used the athlete, in that case, the young Michael Jordan, to, to launch a, a new product, to move more into the, the basketball space and to uh, improve their, their reach and, and so forth in that space. Um, probably at the time, Michael Jordan wasn't that much of a punt for them to take. Um, but it just to give you the concept of why, of why people might do it. And it can happen a lot more locally than that as well. Um, and I'll talk more about that uh, later in the, in the webinar. Um, but the bottom one there as well is something that I've seen come up um, quite a bit. Um, and it can just be sometimes down to um, if, the, if you are connected, if you can network, if you're um, somebody in the organization, the company, um, is really passionate about your uh, particular sport or what you're doing as well. Um, and sometimes the, if, a, if a key decision maker really uh, connects with, with you or what you're trying to do um, or the sport that you're in, and that, that can also be a pretty strong pull. Um, but that requires finding the right people and, and networking. Um, and so I'm going to talk about that as well, just so that you've, uh, you've got a bit of a of background there. Um, types of sponsorship, um, there's multiple. Um, the, one of the obvious ones, I'll just flick through a few different ones, is sort of products, um, services, financial commission. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about them. Obviously, a lot of people's minds go to, to financial. Um, you, you hear the, the, the big name athletes sign in. Uh, lucrative sponsorship deals. Um, everyone knows it's expensive to, to make it in sport or to, to advance in sport, compete. Uh, and so financial is one of the, probably the big ones that people have in mind. Um, but it's also, it's a very difficult place to start if you're um, a young emerging um, athlete with not many runs on the board to, to think that you can go in and, and and find that financial backing is a tricky one. So I think um, it's not impossible, but if you look at a relationship with a sponsor as something that can grow over time, the, there's easier places to start. Um, product is probably potentially one of them. Um, and if you think about, uh, say, BMX riders, um, always going to be needing uh, different parts for their bikes. Um, they, there's potential there to reach out to the, the manufacturers um, if you can provide value both ways. You know, getting product can be extremely useful. Um, no, it's not money, but it can help you. Um, you know, golfers they would think they would go through a lot of uh, you know, golf balls and equipment that needs to update and change them. And if they can find that relationship, um, again, product can be a very useful thing. And I think it's a good place to, to start with organizations because the chances are um, that if they're involved in the sport they they have the the product um, and it's possibly an easier thing for them to give to you than than going straight in and looking for something more substantial like the financial side um, services is an, also another um, big big place that you can start um, precision athletica um, as a center we're you know, sports physios, um, exercise scientists, nutritionists, strength and conditioning coaches, um, and they're, they're useful services to athletes. Um, they're vital services in many cases. Um, and that therefore means that it's something that you as an athlete might need. Um, you're probably reliant on. Um, and if you can arrange a partnership with a an organization, a company that delivers those services, again, it can save you um, a lot of money. It can help you develop as a sports person. It can get you in, in top shape when it comes to competing. So um, they're, they're the type of services that, that you might look at or begin to look at. Um, others go into potentially into media. So there's media outlets that can help you um, 
help you improve your profile, which in the in the long run is a is a good thing for you. Um, and maybe in in exchange, you can start to help them reach into the sport, or you can provide them with content. And it's always thinking of that as a two way street, like I mentioned. Um, I'm really looking at different organisations to see how how you know you guys could work together. Financial is the big one, and there's some big logos in that picture. Um, you know, Paris Saint-Germain is itself. Um, but, you know, Emirates, Nike, uh, and, and Neymar, obviously, is his own brand. Um, and as I said before, finance is, is probably, it's a great one if you can get it, um, whether it means that you can, as an athlete, um, remove the reliance on you having to have a day job so you can focus more on your sport. Um, if it means that you can, you can get to competitions, uh, you can travel, um, in a better uh, sort of style that is going to make it easier for you to be game ready when you get to your venue. Um, you know, finance is an easy one for you to think about and get excited about. Um, and it's definitely something that a lot of sports people will, will aim for. Um, and I think it's, it is on the journey. Um, but I think, as I said before, it might not be if you're emerging, if you're a new athlete, a young athlete, it's possibly just not the place that you should start. It's more somewhere where you should try to have a plan to, to work towards and to aim for. Um, another one I just, uh, thought I'd mention is, is commission. Um, and that's something, the photo there is from, from when I used to play football. And so it was a, as a local football team, um, we went and um, the, the logo on our shirt was a local fish and chip shop. Um, and they uh, came to the party with us. They they purchased all of our kit. Um, they they gave us all of the training equipment. They helped us with costs towards our, our fees and everything like that. Um, and they did that up front with the idea that we would basically de deliver the value back to them. Um, so we would commit to uh, attending uh, and having team meals there. Um, a certain number of times, um, bringing friends and family and things like that until we'd sort of worked off the, the, the tab, if you like, so they paid up front. And then after that, we were on to commission. So when, uh, when people would go in um, and quote that they had come uh, because of us, as a, because of our team, um, we would get a portion of, of what they spent put into um, a, a kitty for us. And so that became like a commission agreement with the, with the shop. Um, and it was easy then for them. They could see where they were getting the wind. They were getting the foot traffic. They were getting people coming in and spending money. They knew it had come from us. Um, and we benefited because obviously they helped us out at the start. And then as it went on through the season, we were able to um, get a bit more money to spend on the other things that the costs that come up through the season that were going to make us do better as a team. Um, and so commission can be um, a really nice uh, starting point and a, a quite an, an easy conversation to have with an organization um, probably also in that sense you know you look at a lot of um, supplement manufacturers out there and things like that if you're able to um, reach an audience that then goes out and, and spends money with a, with a company um, and you can track that that money has come about because of you well, that's a great thing for the company it gets them the business um, and it makes it quite easy for them to then put aside uh, in terms of like a commission relationship um, money for you to spend on your development or whether it's their services or something that you can spend elsewhere. That's um, again, can be quite an, a good starting point um, when looking to, to get involved with a company. Um, moving on then. So I think what you want to do is you want to start to get your head around um, why companies sponsor um, and the whole marketing side of it get get that concept so that makes sense to you um, have a think about those different types of uh, sponsorships that are uh, potentially available um, understand where you fit in um, where you fit into that and uh, what realistically you have to offer um, and then really you want to start thinking about how to approach um, sponsors and it's like anything probably uh, don't take it personally if it takes a while or if you if you don't get the outcome that you want with with everyone um, but you do need to be thinking about how to approach them in the best way and this probably ties into one of the 
the common mistakes that I see, um, you really need to get your head then around the fact it's all about them. Um, and I've been approached over the years by a lot of uh, sports people who, in my mind, they've gotten this wrong. They, they contact me and tell me um, basically what they're all about. Um, and they don't take the time to understand uh, my side of it. They don't take the time to understand the business, um, why the business might want to get involved with them, the, the pressures that the people working at the business might be under. Um, and you have to understand that you're reaching out to someone and you might be, um, you might be a pretty big deal in your world um, and your friends and your family and your parents and your coaches um, are helping you, you're building your confidence, you're doing very well um, and you know, you're the main topic of conversation and how well you're doing and that's great. But on the flip side, the, the business has a whole range of pressures as well and, and you're reaching out to someone who will have targets that they have to meet um, they'll have tasks that they have to do every day that they don't like. They'll have tasks that they have to do that they do like. Um, they've got their KPIs. They've got stresses and strains away from work as well. You know, family, they've got everything else. They've got their whole world as well. And as great as you are and as great as you are in your sport, you need to understand and you need to be sympathetic to that side of it as well. Um, and really, you need to make sure that when you're approaching someone, you're coming from a point of view of making it as easy as possible for them to see why they would work with you um, and actually make it easy for them to say yes and, and picture themselves doing some, some sort of partnership, some sort of sponsorship with, with you as a, as a sports person. And so I kind of look at it and think if the outcome that you're shooting for it is of high value to you or potentially high value to you and has a big impact on, on what, what you're doing, um, you should in, invest a suitable amount of time. Um, if it's important to you, then it's important to do it right. Um, and that means taking the time to uh, understand the company um, and work out the right approach for dealing with them. And so when I say understand the company, it, it could be tricky. Um, but I'm sure if you, if you take the time to have, uh, have a think about each company or you speak to people that you know that might know um, more about them than, than you do, um, you can actually probably start to understand what they're going to be looking for, what their uh, goals might be, um, what they're trying to do in their industry, uh, how they're targeting people, what the, the problems that they have. Um, and that's going to put you in a better position to start a conversation and understand how to pitch yourself at them um, as a company or as a, as a, as a one-man band, however they are. Um, it will give you a better position to actually reach out and talk to them about what you can do for them. And it's very much about what you can do for them. Um, if, you've, if you've already got in your mind that they can help you with product um, or they can provide services or potentially finance, then great, you know what they can do for you. Um, so now it's a case of going, how can, how can I help them? Um, and, you know, even in terms of the example of the, the fish and chip shop that we approach as a football team, um, it doesn't take a lot to think, okay, well, it's a, it's a, a food shop. Uh, it's on the high street, it was in Bondi. Um, they need to get people in. They want to sell their product. Their product is food, it's meals. Uh, they've got tables in there that every night they need people in, they need takeaways, so they need foot traffic. Um, they're all challenges for them. They've got rent to pay. Uh, they've got competition in the area. Um, they've got staff to, to look after. So you can really, it's not too difficult to start to get a basic idea of um, of, of their world um, and then from our point of view it's a case of going well we're a squad of 20 uh, we've all got friends and families we all work we've got um, this football club that we're a part of um, we can we are their customer potentially we can go there we can take business there we can drum up business for them we can um, we can do all of these things for them and if you've got your mind starting to go into this sort of area um, and when you start to talk to them you're, you're coming from that point of view of I, I, can, I can take a guess at what your problems are and I can actually give you some solutions to them. Um, and I'm not going to ask you for the world because 
we run an untested uh, ground, so I don't, you don't know whether we can provide value for you. And we think we can, but we don't really know whether we can provide that value that you want. Um, it gives you a much better place to start. Um, and honestly, the worst, uh, <laughs> the worst things that I, I get is if uh, an email comes through from, from someone and they're basically just saying, hey, I play this sport, I think I'm really good. Um, can you give me some stuff? And I get a lot, and I've had a lot of emails like that. Um, and that's to be, to be brutally honest, it's just, if I've even read it, it's going straight in the bin. Um, and there'd be a lot of people out there like that. It does nothing for me. Um, you might be the next best thing. You might be about to break through. Um, but realistically, you've, <laughs> you've really not taken the time to help me to make my life any easier. Um, or to, to really show the respect uh, that, that you're asking for in return. So chances are it won't get very far. I've also put research there uh, is in network. So if try and figure out who you're trying to contact. Um, getting through to the right person can be pretty make or break. Um, it's not always easy to do. Sure, if uh, you're going for the local cafe, um, you know, or the local barbecue shop or service that's in the area, you can probably go in and you can probably work out who's who, um, who's the manager, if they have some sort of person that, that might look after marketing, you can probably figure that out or you could strike up a personal relationship with, with someone. If it's say something like a cafe, it's probably not that hard to, to start to get to know the staff there um, and whoever's, whoever's working there and build a relationship with them so they know who you are. Um, if you're going a much higher level than that, it can be difficult. Um, but also keep in mind that um, you will be in circles where other people, um, parents, friends, uh, people connected to your sports club, um, they, they will know people and you can network a whole different range of ways to, to get to the sort of place that you want to go to and to try and work out as well um, what companies out there um, might be interested in you um, and how you're progressing in your sport. And that really ties in for me to identifying good fits. Um, and that's a good fit for, for you. Um, and that's also obviously a good fit for them. Um, there is really, there's, there's hundreds, thousands, millions of companies out there or shops out there, brands, service providers, however you look at it. Um, could be tempting to, to send something just out there, blanket something to everyone. Um, but I'd really recommend against doing that. I think if you want to make the most of the time that you're going to invest in this, you need to go out and think about what you bring to the table um, and who that's going to appeal to um, and who you can help in return um, with what you can do or who you reach or who you know. Um, and so you make sure that rather than just blanket, go for everyone in the hope that um, something lands, really start to target it down. Um, start to understand what you bring, start to understand what they bring, what they're looking for. And if you can find that there's a clear way that you can provide value to them and they have the, some sort of value that you're after is going to help you in your sport or your development, then you start to fall into the idea of that's a good fit um, and start to focus more of your time um, on those type of, of brands. And then the next thing to do would be, I suppose, the understanding the, the return on investment, um, uh, the ROI, uh, and getting clarity. So like I've said before, figure out where you're coming from, um, how you're thinking that you can approach someone, what you can deliver for them, and you figure out what it is that they're likely to want as well. Um, if they're going to invest in you in, in any form, then they're going to want something back. And if you can um, start to understand that and start to make that easy for them to see how they're going to get that return, then it's, it's highly likely that you can get somewhere in your conversations with them. If you uh, don't give any thought to how you can genuinely return value for them, um, I think you're going to struggle to get sponsorship. And or if you get something, you're going to struggle to maintain it over time. So you really need to start to get this picture together uh, in your own mind before you approach them. And when it comes to approaching people, um, you know, at some point, I think you're going to need to write a proposal. Um, one size doesn't fit all. Uh, and when I say that, I mean, 
don't just you know write one thing copy and paste and, and just blast it out uh, to any sort of email address that you can find as I've said before start to think about them understand them and tailor what you're saying so that it's directly to them to their problems um, and to how you can help them um, you know when you're putting together a proposal sure you're going to need to explain who you are um, again in the analogy of you might be a pretty big deal uh, in your own world they that doesn't mean that they know much about you or connect with you or who you are or what you're trying to achieve so you do uh, you do need to get that across obviously um, as in what sport you do and how well you're doing or where you're taking it to or it doesn't always have to be that you, you're planning on being the next sports star um, you're just very passionate about what you do um, and again you think that you can help each other out uh, and that's valuable to both of you um, so start to put that together um, you need to be clear in, in who you are and what you're looking for but also clear in what you uh, can do in return for them and what value you're going to deliver um, don't don't go too long um, it's, it's people talk about CVs and how long they should be um, and it's if you send something that's sort of five six pages through to someone they're probably not got the time to read it so you don't need to, to go that long it really does want to be quite short concise um, and really if you need help, uh, you should write something up and then you should have um, family, friends, if you, if you know someone that's in a position that's experiencing this, them to help you uh, just read over it, uh, put themselves in the position of the person receiving it. Um, does it paint a good picture for them pretty quickly in terms of why they should read on or why they should think about you know, meeting you or talking to you? Um, and, and really spend that time to get it right and to get it ready. Um, from there, like I said before, you need to work out how you're going to get this uh, proposal to the right person. Um, blanket emails to random email addresses tend to not get very far. Um, a lot of people will have uh, hundreds of emails coming into them every day, and it's very hard to cut through that. Um, and they might be you know, the promotional emails, they might be important emails, they might be from their bosses, their family, wives, you know, creditors, debtors, anything really. Um, and so you need to have some cut through. So obviously if you've done some networking beforehand and you found a way to get to the right person or, or you found someone that can deliver it to their boss or deliver it up the chain, deliver it to that person for you, then that's going to be uh, a good way of going about it. Uh, unsolicited uh, emails are... Like I said, they're, they're difficult to get through. They're difficult to think are going to work out very well for you. So if you can find a way of getting it to the right person uh, in a good way, that's great. Um, potentially, you could look to follow up not long after you've sent it. Perhaps give them a call uh, to make sure that they've received it, uh, just to add a little bit more um, depth to the proposal. Um, I wouldn't be calling them thinking you're going to have a long conversation or that you're going to try and achieve anything in that call in terms of the agreement really it would just be to make sure that it's it's come through and, and to try and increase your chances of them opening it um, but that depends again depends on uh, probably what you're asking and who you're asking um, and you have to think about that it's hard to get hold of for some people at, in big business at high level uh, smaller businesses it might be possible and it might be the approach that you should take um, so then it's, uh, it's the value, uh, and, and what value that you, you, that you're providing, um, to them. And you probably have ideas in that already, but, uh, just to, just to try and help a little bit, um, you, you you're going to have to understand their business. Uh, you're going to have to paint the picture for how they're going to, uh, you can marry them up with the customers that they want or the exposure that they want. Um, and they're probably going to understand that if you're an emerging athlete, young athlete, they're not going to be able to deliver the world. And that's probably not what they're looking for. That's, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, but you are going to commit to something. And I think you need to make sure that you deliver on anything that you've committed to. Um, and so in terms of providing value, there's, there's just some basics there. And I think it's, it's make sure that you're on the front foot. Um, 
you know, if you can over deliver, uh, especially early on in the relationships to show that you're committed to show how you can work for them. Um, and be thinking about things like how you can reach out and actually ask um, what more you can do for them. So just because you guys come to some sort of agreement that you're going to um, turn up to a couple of events or you're going to provide social media um, posts for them every now and then, don't just think, oh, because I've said one, I'm going to leave it at one. Um, think about what more you can do. If a company gets a call, if they, if they start working with an athlete, maybe they're taking a chance anyway. That athlete's reaching out to them and saying, you know, hey, how's your business going? Um, have I generated anything for you yet? Uh, what can I help with? I mean, it doesn't always have to be in the way that you think as well. Um, maybe you can go and help them. Uh, if there's a service business, maybe you can actually roll your sleeves up and help them. Uh, maybe you can take people down to do the same. Um, if they've got some new promotion coming up, you might be able to, to look at ways in which you can help them get that out there or deliver it. Um, and in terms of things like the, the social media, um, I think a lot of people go, hey, it's great, I'm going to work with so-and-so. You know, I've got uh, 500 followers. Um, I can post to my Facebook and you know, I'm going to expose you to 500 people. That's great. You must, uh, that must be really exciting for you as a business. Um, but, you know, the reality is that, you know, even things like that, Facebook um, probably only displays posts to about 10% of your audience. So say you've got your 500 people, 10% um, of that is dropping back to 50. Um, from there, you know, most people are sat there scrolling through their feeds. Um, so, so again, only a small percentage might actually notice a post and click through rate goes even lower. So, um, you know, you might think that putting out one post is really helping the, the business reach this big audience, but the reality is probably no one is going to click it. No one's going to see it. And I don't want to, anyone to get disheartened, but it goes back to the idea of you're probably just going to have to do more than the basics. Um, and if you can actually deliver value back to a company, they're going to be much more inclined to uh, continue the relationship, to provide more, to look to upgrade the level of support that they're doing. And so you might start with that relationship around product. Um, they might provide you with the product that you need uh, to compete in your sport. Um, you do a little bit to try and get them out there. If you can show that there's, uh, you're actually able to get people to go in and, and, and take the product from them as well, whether it's purchasing it, however their company is, um, they're going to start to get a little bit more interested in you. If you can be professional in the way that you conduct yourself, um, if you can show them what it is that you're doing for them um, and following the social media uh, idea there, you know, it's not hard to put together a social media schedule now. You could proactively say, hey, this is what I'm going to do for you and this is when I'm going to do for it. And you can provide them with little bits of information about how it went. You know, did I do enough? Didn't I do enough? Did I help? Can I do more? Um, can we look at, I mean, you know, partway through the relationship, can I do other things that we've not talked about? And these are all the sort of things that make their life easy. Um, and ultimately, if you can make their life easy, if you can show them that the, the chance they took on you was well worth it, um, then there's more likelihood that you're going to be able to grow that relationship with them. That they're, If you can make them look good in their business or to their, their bosses or whatever it is, there's a, there's a lot more hope for this relationship growing. Um, one of the things I said at the start was I uh, founded Athlete Marketing. Um, and there's an article on there that is just follows in this thread. And it was one I did with the supplement brand True Protein um, and how anyone can get sponsorship with them, but what they look for. Um, so I just popped that up there because if you are, if you are thinking along those lines, um, that gives you some more good feedback from actually from the brand's perspective of, of what they value um, and what kind of relationships they would start with people and what they would expect in return. Um, so just give you some more ideas. Um, conscious of the time, um, and just trying to give you that, that general oversight. Uh, and I've talked about some of the common mistakes that, that I've seen um, come through, and so it's probably just recovering those. Um, but in the nicest possible way, it's not all about you. 
Um, I think if you can go into it from the mindset that it's actually all about them, um, I think that is going to set you up to do a lot better. Um, and also make sure that you get your, your, uh, your tone right and think long term. And so um, I see a lot of young sports people um, and, and there's nothing to say about showing personality. I think you need to show your personality and you know, that can be a big selling point for you. Um, but I always like to think, you know, it's, it's never, um, it's never too, you're never too young or it's never too late, uh, to start really behaving like a professional athlete. And I've, you know, met a lot of professional athletes over the years, um, or, you know, people that are, are high up in business and they always seem to have an aura around them. They, 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 they just seem a little bit different to everybody else out there. And I think part of that is confidence. Um, but part of that is just how they handle themselves, how they conduct themselves, how they hold themselves. Um, you know, they, they're, they're professional. They're, they, they understand that how they behave is what they say, how they conduct themselves. It is part of, if you like, their brand, um, how they're perceived and, and how likely people are to, to support them, whether that's support as a fan or support as a, as a business or, or anything like that. So um, I think make sure that you're, you're grateful, make sure that, you know, if you're dealing with someone that, uh, you know, whoever really, um, make sure that you can just conduct yourself in a professional manner. Um, you know, if, and that might come to how you deal with, with coaches or the, uh, the, the governing bodies. Um, you know, I imagine, I imagine if um, one of the top golfers, uh, Jordan Spieth, I imagine whether he got a call saying he'd been selected for the, the Ryder Cup team, you know, he would, you know, he'd be grateful, he'd pro be professional about that in the same way that if Under Armour called him and, and asked him something or wanted to talk about the contract, he'd be professional in that. And so um, what I mean is just get your tone right. And if you, you know, if you respond, you know, in the same way that you, to, to these people that you would to your friends, um, I think you might be, making it harder for them to, to back you. Um, and what it goes back to is making their life easy. And so if they know that dealing with you, you're, you're going to be professional, you're going to conduct yourself in the right way. You really, again, it goes back to making it, them understand that they're going to, their life is going to be made easier um, and that you're going to represent their brand always in the right way. Um, and you want to make it as easy as possible. Um, the other one there, the final one there is, uh, people that don't do their homework and I mean it by examples of people that just reach out please give me this because I'm this um, you need to understand who you're approaching and, and what you can do for each other um, and so taking that little bit of time just to to understand them um, and then how you approach them um, I think will make a big difference to the likelihood that you've got for success and like I said at the start I do think there's potential out there for everyone. So I do think you can be successful if you go about things in the right way. Um, and that is, that is the presentation. Um, like I said, I, I'm really just hoping to, to touch on the subject for you to give you a little bit of insight. So I hope I have. Um, there was a couple of questions that I saw um, pop through. You know, I'll happily answer for you. Um, the first one there was about age. Um, and I guess what's the right age to, is, is age a factor? Um, and I go, it's probably, um, it's probably a case by case situation. Um, and if you think about it, certain sports, uh, you peak at a very young age. I'm thinking probably of diving and gymnastics and sports like that. Uh, you could potentially be a Olympic gold medalist um by in your early teens possibly younger um and if an, if an organization is connected to that sport uh, and wants to reach that sport then probably working with a younger athlete um is is not going to be an issue that's the, probably the reality there's other sports there um darts comes to mind that is a completely different demographic and an older demographic um and so, and even in terms of you don't have to be at the professional level, uh, age doesn't necessarily, I don't think, have to be a, prohibit, a prohibitive factor, um, so long as there's a clear reason why the athlete and the sponsor would talk to each other, what the value would be, um, and, how, and how they can help each other. 
So I don't think age needs to be a problem. I think you just, it would be a case by case situation. Um, there's another one there about how to, how to network. Um, and I think, I think it's an interesting one. I think a lot of the time, um, it's being realistic with who you're going to approach. Um, and I think I, I said, if you're, uh, if you look at, the, at yourself, those that are around your club or your sporting organization, there's often quite a lot of people in, in positions of, um, power or in positions where they can help you. Um, and because they're connected to the club, I'm thinking back to when I played golf, um, golf clubs are a really interesting mix of, um, of different people that are on the mem say on the memberships um, that you can end up playing golf with um, any day of the week or in competitions on the weekend, um, and they can be some of the the highest positions in organisations. They can be, you know, youngsters coming through that want to try and you know do something great or bring a creative idea through. Um, you know, there's people that can connect with what you're trying to do and they, they know people, they have friends of friends. And so I'd probably say start by looking at those people around you um, and those businesses that you're already familiar with, that you already um, value. Um, I think it's always best if you truly value the service or the product, um, you're already spending money on it and you would spend money on it either way then you really invested in that and you've already shown that. So I think that's a good place to start um, in terms of approaching people. Um, and chances are you already know them or they know you as opposed to having to cold call just companies out there just because you think that they might have a budget or you think that they might work with other people. I think if you can start with the people immediately in your network um, or in products that you believe in, products that you already spend money on, uh, then that's a, a pretty good start. Um, but that's about all we've got time for. Um, but I really appreciate everyone that's uh, that's registered uh, and that's that's watching or watched. I hope I do hope I've provided some sort of uh, insights for you, some ideas and some some value there. Um, you're welcome to to reach out to me um, when the the video goes out, the webinar goes out. Uh, my contact details will be there. Feel free to, to get in touch. Um, I've obviously got Athlete Marketing as well, which I uh, you know, post about and put resources on and, and ideas. So you can take a look at that uh, and there'll be links sent out to that as well. Um, and obviously at Precision Athletica, uh, we work with a lot of athletes, um, emerging athletes. Um, and it's as part of uh, I would hope working with us, um, we, we're always as a team trying to, to help people steer them in the right direction if we can as well. So, um, yeah, look after yourselves. If you need anything, reach out. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the session um, and took some value from it. Thanks very much.